From Eyewitness News, this is Newsmakers. It was the news that broke thousands of hearts in southern New England. Benny's, Benny's. The iconic Rhode Island retailer Benny's is closing up shop after 93 years. Another household name in the Ocean State going the way of Almax, WBRU, and Rocky Point. But do those who express shock and sadness at the news have only themselves to blame for its demise? Our guest this week on Newsmakers, the president of Benny's, Arnold Bromberg. Welcome to Newsmakers. I'm Tim White. To my left from WPRI.com reporter Ted Nisi. Arnold Bromberg, president of Benny's, third generation, I believe. Vice president. The vice president. Okay. Well, I think I've been that writing name. president for a week. I think. Right. You probably should have called us yeah. at well. some point. <laughs> well, in fairness to us, it's partly because you're not big on your labels. family has never been big on titles. Right. Right. right so right. we get confused. You That's are the right. front man of Benny's. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm the one who. Uh, yeah. <laughs> face of Benny's. Can the we just go with Benny's that? Exactly. Okay, that's one of the faces, yeah. yeah. Arnold, we'll just call you Arnold Ben. <laughs> that's, that's perfect. Right. Uh, you realize you ruined a lot of weekends last week, right? Yeah, well, it was it was a tough weekend for uh, for all of us. I bet. How hard a decision was it? Well, it the, it was not a hard decision because it's it's based on the facts and numbers and and you just arrive at things logically. Uh, the, the the difficult part of the decision is the effect it has on people. Mm. And you mean your employees, yeah, primarily? Um, yeah, of course. So what did you tell them, and how did, how did you do it? Well, we, we made the announcement at our dis distribution center to our office and warehouse staff. And then after that, uh, my brother, my sister, and I, and our, uh, my nephews, we got on the phone and as quickly as we could called all the stores, spoke to the managers, and, uh, and let them know. And what was the reaction generally? I know. I'm well, sure there was a, a lot of different types of reactions. Yeah, the, the reaction was the, the, the first half a dozen stores we each well, that, uh, that were totally called it was it was news to them but after that the social mm -hmm. media from the people who we had told at our facility in uh, Smithfield had got the word out through social media so but but still you know that we needed to talk to them because we wanted them to hear it directly from us before they had to rely on any other uh, source of the news did you ch did you uh Talk to the governor at all? I, yeah, I spoke to her earlier that day. So that was the day that you made the yeah. announcement was a day you told the governor? Yes. What did you say to her and what was her reaction? Her reaction was, oh my God. She said, <laughs> where am I going to do my Christmas shopping? Uh, no, she was shocked. Um, it, uh, and, and that's basically, I just told her the way it is. I said, you know, we're, we're, uh, we, we faced uh, a lot of competitive pressures and a lot of it from uh, sources beyond our control. And customers' shopping habits have changed dramatically, and that's that's why we did it. She try and talk you out of it in any way, or offer any, or say, "Hey, is there anything well, we no, can I, do?" Yeah, she she did. She said, "You know, what, you know, is there anything the state could do to help?" And it, but by that point, it's it's beyond that. We we were we knew this would be big news in our newsroom, uh, mm -hmm. just because Tim said in the open, it's, you're, the Benny's is iconic, and, and uh, people are nostalgic in Rhode Island generally. I would mm -hmm. say, but we were still surprised, I think, by the sheer volume of the reaction we heard in our, you know, the, the social media, the comments on our story, just the, mm -hmm. the number of people watching and reading the stories we posted. I'm curious for you, uh, if you, if this was just what you expected or if you were surprised by uh, the scale of the reaction to this announcement. By the scale of it, I, I knew, I knew there would be that type of reaction, I knew it would be big, but it was much bigger than I thought. But, uh, but then you think about it, it's Rhode Island, and, and uh, Rhode Islanders are funny, and they, and southeastern Mass, Connecticut too, they, they stick to things that are uh, near and dear to them. And uh, we, what, I don't know, any, have, have there been any moments that were, are memorable in the past week, or, you know, customers that have come up to you in the store said something, or, you know, has is it, is it been touching, I guess, is something well, that's no, been a part of your life? Yeah, no, a lot of people, I've, uh, we've gotten a lot of emails from a lot of old friends, and, and friends in, in, in the business world, too, and uh, I had one, I was reading uh, last weekend, I was reading a lot of the Facebook comments, and the, my favorite was a woman who said, uh, Benny's, you've broken my heart, but I'm going to your store to buy some super glue to, super glue to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's yeah. smart. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> my wife and son went mm -hmm. to Benny's uh, on Sunday, and she said it was a madhouse. It was <laughs> absolutely jammed in there. How was business this past weekend? You know, the business has been good. Yeah. I mean, uh, and a lot of the people that are going there uh, are going there to buy Benny's paraphernalia. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You can't find a sweatshirt, a hat, 
a T-shirt, and I'm kind of guessing that some of the people watching this program right now, they want that. You know, they're yeah. going to want that so they can have it for years to come, mm -hmm. and they're worried they're all gone. What do you tell them? They, if, if they're not on by the time, uh, if we don't have them back in by the time the show is on, they'll be back in within a day or two. New T-shirts and new hats. What was the and we'll be doing more different T-shirts as we go on. Okay. So, so you, so you just saw a huge amount of foot traffic mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. The, in the in recent days. Now, are people are people buying more? Are they, are they buying a decent amount over there? Are they coming in to just see Benny's and they you know they pick no, something small? No, they're, they're buying more. I mean, it's you know, um, it's it's a nice uh, a nice bump in business. <laughs> does that bump in business? Um, does that hasten? when the stores will close as uh, merchandise goes out. I, you know, I guess I don't have a full understanding mm -hmm. if you're restocking the shelves actively yeah. right now. Well, we are restocking the shelves. We have, we have a warehouse uh, distribution center in Smithfield with a lot of merchandise in it. And we're not bringing very much more in now at all. There's, there are a number of things that we're committed to that we're bringing in. And we plan on shipping it out to the stores as quickly as we can and, and selling it as quickly as we can. And I'm curious a little about the nuts and bolts, Arnie, about actually closing the stores. Um, when, maybe it's already up and I haven't seen it yet, uh, you know, when will the, I think you're calling it a retirement sale, uh, when will that start or has it already started? And when will we actually see stores close? Probably not for several weeks, but uh, we, we, are, we are still making that, uh, that plan uh, uh, definite. Matter of fact, we'll be, I'll be working on that today. So, when you say several weeks, I mean several weeks till we see stores close, or till the retirement sale begins. Till uh, both. Both. So okay. we could see stores close in, in, in three to four weeks. There could be it, some it, stores. It's possible. It's possible. D and it does that depend on how quickly you know the warehouse is getting thinned out and yeah, merchandise. Yeah, it, it depends on that, and depends how how. Uh, yeah, it it depends on that and a lot of different things. Yeah. So uh, you. You have 31 stores, Connecticut, yeah. Rhode Island, Massachusetts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, but you, the family owns the land and the buildings that are on those. 29 of the 31. Okay. So, all right. So, two of them you rent. Mm -hmm. Probably least. smart to check that right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, a lot of people, you know, want to know what's going to happen to the building that's mm -hmm. around the corner from their house or, or down the road. What are some of the ideas about what's going to happen to all that property? Well, we, we're... We have a, uh, as Buddy Sands used to say, an intergalactic search going on for find people who are interested, and, and there are a lot of there's a lot of interest. Um, the, they're great retail locations, and they're on you know uh, main main roads mm -hmm. and, and neighborhoods, um, and so they'll end up being some type of retail store. I, I have no doubt about that. Do you they're, think maybe all different ones, but they'll be some sort of retail store. Well, that was my next yeah. question. I mean, uh, do, do you anticipate selling them individually or as a whole? And maybe or, or these in, questions or, are too premature. Or, or in clumps. It could, be, it could be any of those ways. So when, as Ted pointed out, uh, the news was huge in Rhode Island. Um, it, it sounds like more than, than you expected. Uh, I know there was some talk, I was reading that, you tried to, to maybe look at selling the business, but that didn't yeah. work out. Mm -hmm. Has your phone, did, did it ring since the news came out? Has there been any, been any interest in trying to uh, preserve the business from an outside entity, anything like that? No, no, really there hasn't. The only thing that I've heard is there's this, uh, I guess, some petition, an online Amazon. petition going around, yeah, that uh, some, uh, someone who, I guess he, he grew up in Rhode Island and uh, he had this idea. That's the only thing I've heard of. But uh, I believe he wants Amazon to buy Benny's and, and keep it open. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, who knows? Will you take the call if Bezos calls? Absol <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so uh, how close are you? Uh, I don't know how much you can or will give away, mm -hmm. but um, the real estate, it's a very, you know, there's actually been in the business circles. I've been trading emails with people, speculation, mm -hmm. who might want them, who might mm -hmm, want those mm -hmm. locations. Do, are you close, do you think, to finalizing? It could be multiple deals, it sounds like, mm -hmm. but having an announcement on that, or do you think it'll be a bit before it, you have it's news? It's a little, a little bit, a little bit. I think it's going to take a little while, but... Uh, but the stores are still there and they're running. So it's. Uh, but we we want to do it the right way and we want to, you know, keep a uh, in mind what's going to happen to these stores in these locations. Because mm -hmm. not only are they great retail locations, but we think we have the best retail employees there are. So you know, hopefully that uh, it would help everyone. So some, your hope is some of the employees that are being displaced by could actually could end could up be. still working yeah. in that in, building in retail. Yeah. Um, what does it say to you that um, when you? 
made some prelim preliminary phone calls to try and sell the business mm -hmm. that you didn't have much luck. What does that say to you? Well, uh, it, so it sounds like we made the right decision because it, no one is willing to jump into uh, this business model with 31 stores in, in 2017. And why is that? What you know? I mean, I, we we talk about Amazon, yeah. we talk about Walmart and mm -hmm. Target. Mm -hmm. Is that is that is it as simple as that? You just can't compete. No, on it's, it's. I think it's the size we were. I think if if we had uh, hundred stores, seventy five stores, maybe even fifty stores, maybe it might might have made a difference. But um, it's just it, it's the scale that we are now, and um, for us to uh, acquire merchandise and to um, be in the forefront. It's not the level playing field it used to be. What do you mean? Well, uh, a lot of manufacturers will make deals with uh, uh, Walmart or Target or Amazon. Um, Amazon can probably make their own deal, yeah, <laughs> sure. dictate their own deals. And uh, it, it, years ago, it wasn't like that. We, we used to uh, all buy from the same price sheet, and, and uh, we, we had the, uh, the same opportunities. There, there are um, companies that will we'll have sales representatives come into Rhode Island to go to CVS. They'll fly into Green Airport. They'll drive past us to have an appointment with CVS, drive back past us, and uh, get back on their airplane. And, and you know, we ask these, these manufacturers, these vendors, and they say, well, that's not the person who's uh, uh, working to call on Benny's. Mm. And, so and so we, get, we do get left behind in some of those cases. Just help people understand yeah. who, who aren't in the world of business. Does that mean a product that is sold at Walmart or Amazon, they get it a heck of a lot cheaper the, than the, Benny's can? Well, I don't know if it's a heck of a lot cheaper. They probably get it cheaper. They get it um, easier, in, some, in a lot of cases, before us. Hmm. There are some cases with uh, uh, you know nationally known products that we, we first time we hear about it is when we see that uh, Walmart has it. There's a case going back to, I, I think it was in the 90s. Remember, the, uh, I think it was called, uh, her name was Sacagawea, and the, they, they made the gold, a gold dollar coin. Okay. And the first year that that was out, the only way you could get it was in change at Walmart. Hmm. And uh, shortly after that Christmas, uh, I was at some retail convention, and there was a, a, a booth there for the U.S. Mint. And they're selling it there, the one saying, okay, well, after we're done, with Walmart selling this, we'll let maybe let other retailers have access to this coin. I mean, that's so that's kind of an important point. It sounds like it's not just that Benny's. You know, uh, you had some trouble uh, because we're using Amazon, Walmart. It's also because it, you weren't even allowed to. You, you know, if you'd had a level playing field, maybe you could have fought on longer, or maybe you would right. have had a somewhat easier time. Right. right. Yeah. Right. All right. We're going to take a break here on Newsmakers. When we come back, we want to talk to Arnold Bromberg, who is the face of Benny's <laughs> vice president, the Benny's guy, uh, about the business climate in Rhode Island. Stay with us. You're watching Newsmakers. The Benny's commercial that you know so well, produced by Dante Bellini. I'm Tim White. Welcome back to Newsmakers. To my left, WPRI.com reporter Ted Nisi and our guest this week, part of the third generation of owners for the iconic Southern New England retailer Benny's, is Arnold Bromberg. Um, Arnold, before I get into my mm -hmm. business climate question, time to, this is like confessional. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Have you ever bought anything from Amazon or uh, uh, Walmart? Uh, Walmart, no. Although I once years ago went looking for a uh, uh, an action figure for my son that that we had sold out of and he really wanted for his birthday, but they didn't have it. So. Did you go in like with a disguise? No, or anything I had like a little that? hoodie or something. <laughs> <I think. laughs> All right, look, uh, I want to talk to you about the business climate in Rhode Island. It's always it's a hot topic a lot on this show because we have a lot of politicians here. Um, do you think uh, established Rhode Island businesses like Benny's mm -hmm. um, are getting the short straw from the state as Rhode Island dangles carrots to lure? outside companies in? In other words, do, do you feel like, you know, the, the state is turning their back in any way on established businesses in Rhode Island? No, I don't think so. No, I don't, I don't, that's not my, I don't have that feeling at all. I think some of the things the state's done, but with the truck tolls, you know, is, is not something that works in our favor, but... Uh, Talk a little bit more about that. How would the, uh, 
truck toll impact bennies. I'm sure you've calculated that. Well, yeah, it's it's it would be in the I don't know tens, hundreds, of thousands of dollars. It would be, it would be a lot of money. But um, my feeling on it, and that's my feeling, is that the way it it, it was um, it's presented, it's it's not it's it's ludicrous because it, it, it's done assuming that the cars aren't told, trucks are told because trucks do more damage than cars. Mm -hmm. But why aren't the heaviest trucks told? Meaning what? Well, our, our trucks... So the smaller trucks, but with a lot of weight. A lot of, our trucks, fully loaded, maybe weigh 45, 50,000 pounds. Okay. But if you get a cement truck or a construction truck, they can weigh 80,000 pounds or more. Mm. And, and they, are, they're not, they weren't going to be covered by the toll. They're not going to be covered by the tolls. And did you express this to the governor, to the, law, to the lawmakers? Or uh, yes, yes. I, was, I worked uh, back then, I spent some time with Chris Maxwell and, and Mike Collins. And Head of the Trucking Association. Yeah, and, they, and they, that's, that was their message. And that's, and that's oh, well, it's part of their message, but to me it's the most relevant part because it's, it, it makes no sense. It wasn't lost on me that you're closing just as we expect the truck tolls to begin. Did that play any role? Or you looking no, at the no, 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 no. So I want to stay with that point because, you know, you saw immediately on Twitter uh, when we posted the news, you know, political folks trying to make hay out of it, saying, mm -hmm. you know, well, if, we, if we'd done this policy, Benny's would be staying open. If taxes were lower, Benny's would be open. If regulations... Now, I'm sure you, you wouldn't mind if they lowered your taxes or there were fewer regulations, but could, is this a decision, this decision to close, that could have been changed by state policy on, on taxes, on regulations? No, I don't think so. No, no. Why not? Well, because I think that the factors that... Uh, led to the decision is more about the shopping habits of people. Uh, one of the facts is that Rhode Island has a million people in it today. It had a million people in it when I was in the second grade. And uh, the, the population of the country has, has grown at a much higher rate, 50% more maybe in 50, 60 years. So um, there's not, there are fewer people who go shopping, and the people who are going shopping, they've developed habits that work against us. Um, the other thing is, you know, this was also clearly a family decision. Mm. You, you alluded to that earlier, yeah. and you, you've said that in interviews. Um, you and your uh, siblings, the co-owners, uh, had reached retirement, were ready to retire. Yeah. Um, I'm curious, when you talked to, you mentioned your nephews, mm -hmm. um, you have children. Uh, when you talked to the, what would be the next, gen the fourth generation to run Benny's, mm -hmm. um, did, were they interested? Was it clear they didn't want to take it over, and there was no, you know, what was the, what were those conversations it, it wasn't, like? It, that's not, it, and they, and, and you know, the th the fourth generation has been active in, in, in mm. running, helping run it for a, for a number of years. But that wasn't that wasn't the question. Uh, we've you know we've d done this a long time, and we we basically could see the writing on the wall. And we could decode what it said, mm. and what it said was, "This is not a viable, uh, uh, financially viable going forward." Mm. So, how long have you been in this position as, you know, I guess we'll call it vice president, sort of running I, a lot of the operations? A long time. Okay. So, when you look back at that long time, mm -hmm. is there anything you would have done differently? Uh, maybe a turn the company took or should have taken that you wish you could get a do-over on? Yeah. Well, we were in the late. 80s, maybe from 87 to 92, we, we, we had a mail order catalog, and we, um, we did it for five years, and it was getting better all the time, in, but it was losing money, and, which is not the way we've ever yeah, done Yeah, I heard things. that's a bad business model. <laughs> and and, yeah. and we, the projections for, for when it would make money went from the optimistic end, which was my uh, <laughs> estimate, two and a half years, to the people who really knew how to uh, analyze these things for like maybe five years. And... Um, if we, if we had lost money, if we continued to lose a lot of money, we probably would have been in, because this, we ended before Amazon even began. And we were, one of the reasons we stopped doing it because it was the technology investment we would have had to made, make in, uh, in new technology. And in 1992, that stuff was not cheap. Well, and that brings up sort of an yeah. area I want to dive into. You, you have an online presence. You have to now, mm -hmm. hellobennies.com. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, you can't buy a product through that website or as a lot of people use from you know Home Depot or Lowe's, mm -hmm. you do the hold for pickup kind of a yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. Did you guys ever think about exploring that? And do you wish you had, or would that not have changed much? We did, um, but you know we, we were focused on the, the Benny shopping experience, which uh, we get them in the store. Get them in the store, but but we couldn't really feel that we translated that properly to what we could do online, mm. and, and other reasons too. Um, also, uh, just as we're talking, thinking about how the retail business is changing, mm -hmm. I'm curious what you think about the future of, of the newspaper circulars. You know, Benny's still 
does newspaper circulars, I believe. Well, we do or circulars, not new. See, oh, okay, the ones there's, in the mail, there's, right? There's, yeah, right, a circular in the newspaper. Uh, when the new newspapers had hi high circulations, to me it had more of a value because the person was paying for the newspaper mm -hmm. as opposed to the stuff that just gets shoved through the mail slot. Mm -hmm. But now it's... It, it all gets shoved through the mail slot. So, <laughs> so do you still see, you know, print, having a printed circular, um, do you still find that useful for Benny's, and do you think that will continue for, for other retailers? Yeah, oh, I think so, absolutely. Yeah, well, no, people want to want to uh, hold in their hands something that they can browse through and see. It's, it's, it's completely different than trying to look at items laid out on a page mm -hmm. on a computer, which in a lot of cases is, be, is becoming not what you want to look at, but what some brain behind it thinks you want to look at. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're, we're talking this whole show, we have you on because of the announcement mm -hmm. that uh, mm -hmm. you're closing the doors after 93 years. I think I have that right. That's right. Okay. Um, but let's point out, Benny's outlasted Almax, mm -hmm. Apex, Leechmere. Um, we could probably name a couple of others. I, c I can't remember. W what separated Benny's? Ames, Bradley's, Galdor's. Okay. <laughs> so you, those are the ABCs. Go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, going, yeah, flashbacks of my childhood. What, what, what was it about Benny's that was able to weather it for so long, uh, unlike the other companies we just I know. Well, on? I think a lot, a lot of them were um, big box stores before big box stores. They, they, they were t two or three times the size of our stores, and I think that... And you can see one of them on our screen right now. I mean, that's, that's the size of a hardware store right yeah, there. Nice little, a nice little building. <laughs> so is that one. Nice, nice bigger <laughs> Some building. nice cars in front yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah. that's right. <laughs> Um, but keep going. So you think the size of the stores? I think the size of the stores is when the big boxes came in. It just it it, it just people said, well, this Ames, Bradley's, Caldwell, and Zero. I can go to Walmart and Target, to Home Depot and Lowe's, and it it's that bigger shopping experience got translated into something that competed against them. It, it not and then we were probably a little below that that radar. That's that's maybe what it is. Maybe not. I want you to you remind me the question. I'm trying to give you. The no, guess. no, I like it. I uh, best guess. We have these pictures up, um, so it's one. Oh, yes, uh, the, Santa, the Santa Mobile, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, like and you know what family strikes, album. Probably. You know what strikes me about this? I want to ask you about family history, but I'm looking at this truck, um, mm -hmm. uh, and the logo really hasn't changed over the years. I mean, it's still that cursive. Yeah. Yeah. And was there ever, did it, like, remember the new Pepsi or new Coke debacle that happened? <laughs> yeah. Did you guys ever change the logo and it did the huge backlash, or was well, it always that sort of cursive style? It's always been the cursive style. Yeah. The changes we've made were necessitated mostly by uh, a, a particular town gave us a, a restriction on, on what kind of rectangle we could put a sign in. Oh. So we'd separate the letters in some cases, we shortened the tail on the Y. If we had to, but it's still oh, man, the, the regulations thing. businesses yeah. have to navigate. <laughs> um, so I, I do want you to talk about the company's history. Your grandfather was Benny, yeah, right, mm -hmm. uh, and it started out as a autom automotive store. Yeah, he, he started out. He 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 sold tires for a uh, done the tire dealer in Providence, and and I think the, the tire dealer told him he, that he was the be their best salesman. He said, "Well, if I'm that good, I can run my own business," and he did, and he opened up a store. And he sold automotive parts, but he also sold radios and, and radio tubes and headphones, and which, which was like we, brand new at the time, new, right? Right. That was 1924. That was the iPod, <laughs> and, and so uh, and that's what he did. I mean, cars were fairly new, and he—it sounds like he hitched his wagon. Well, well to cars weren't—not that they were new, but back then, if if you if you were going to drive anywhere, any distance in a car, you basically carried certain parts with you. It was it was a fuel pump, a spare tire, obviously because you had to do all the repairs yourself, yeah. uh, and the wow. parts broke down on a much uh, more frequent basis than they do now. And you had, to, you had to be, if you're going to be a driver, a motorist, you had to be a handyman, too. And that's actually something uh, that affected Benny's, too, right? The change in cars and mm -hmm. whether oh, you yeah. can fix your car yourself, right? Yeah, so well, talk about that. Yeah, in the late, in the late 19, uh, 1975 and on, cars went to electronic ignitions. That was the first thing. And there were parts. There was a distributor cap. There was a, a points condenser and rotor and spark plugs that... Basically, any any 16-year-old with a screwdriver and, uh, and a wrench could could uh, change, and you had to do this job on a car at least twice a year. Um, and the electronic ignition killed that. And then with the uh, with a lot of the uh, import cars that came in, there was uh, now instead of 14 or 20 models of cars, whatever it is, it it, it it's an increased tenfold. And the uh, the parts that we had we sold for those cars, shock absorbers, brake shoes, starters, alternate, alternators, um, it, it, 
the proliferation of, of part numbers that we'd have to carry would force us to uh, triple the space just for automotive for parts that didn't really turn over. Right. And, uh, we, it was left to the automotive stores. The auto, AutoZone and Pep Boys do a good job with that. <laughs> we have less than a minute left. Yeah. You're a relatively young guy. What, do, what are your plans? I, I, relatively young, I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to run for office, I'm not going to play pro fo football. <laughs> are you going to leave the state? You live in Rhode Island, do you st uh, plan on staying here? Are you if, gonna... uh, I think my wife's going to insist that we spend some time out of Rhode Island. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe somewhere warm? Maybe somewhere warm or somewhere different. Yeah. Somewhere exotic, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, storms are good for business, right? You keep an eye on a couple of storms. Weather's, got... weather's good. Yeah. All right. Arnold Bromberg, uh, the face of Benny's and vice president of Benny's. <laughs> hey, I think I speak for everybody um, who's watching this program. We are going to miss Benny's. And uh, thank you very much for oh, thank you. Uh, staying in business for so long. If you missed any of the program, it's online, WPRI.com. For Ted Nisi, I'm Tim White. We'll see you next week on Newsmakers.